All right, oh my gosh, I feel like I need the dun dun dun, dun music to um, intro this video because it is, it's been, it's been a journey, guys, um, to get here, but I will do a quick intro if you don't already know who I am. Um, I am guessing that everyone is a reader and I love that. Thank you for being here if you're a reader. Thank you for supporting something new from me. Um, and just thank you for helping me find the confidence to do this. Um, for those of you who aren't a reader, which I think is very unlikely, but I'm Anne and I am a self-published author and just an all around, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know an all around me, so I don't feel like that's not very nice. <laughs> stuff anyway this is my first youtube video for the channel that i hope is going to be around for a while and is going to be talking about everything from beauty to books to travel to food to home to my journey just in life my mental health everything i can think of i want this to be kind of like a lifestyle channel where i can just sit here and talk and do makeup and this isn't a tutorial i feel like i need to say this I just want to get ready and I want to, I don't want to, I don't feel confident enough to teach makeup yet, but um, yeah, this is just me getting ready and I'm going to be talking about how I self-published 22 or 23 books, I think it is, and how I got here and how I'm managing to, you know, continue and just my journey. Uh, I feel like maybe if you're thinking about self-publishing, this might be worth a watch for you. It's such a like an amazing thing that I'm here and I just feel very blessed and I also feel very proud of myself that I didn't um kind of quit because it was very um there are a lot of times where I could quit let's just say that but I'm here and I have written books and I think that's an awesome thing to be able to say and that I'm an author and that I work for myself and I'm 27 years old so Turning my own horn, two, two. <laughs> um, so I'm probably gonna cut this to like me, fresh faced. Uh, if you don't know me, then you'll know that this is kind of a thing, but like a very hard thing, but exciting thing to be confident enough to be on camera with no makeup. So I know that sounds maybe a little bit vain to a lot of you, but I grew up with terrible skin and very self-conscious about my face without makeup. So I love that I'm doing something and like being vulnerable and I definitely talk about a lot of vulnerable stuff like mental health in this video so I really hope you stick around and just put on some makeup with me it's probably gonna be a long one so like grab a snack or a wine or a coffee and um, thank you so much for being here I'm so excited about this channel I feel a little bit delirious I really need a wine and like a big slice of pizza but yeah thank you for being here thank you for watching and I hope you continue <laughs> A journey what a life it has been to get right here where I'm at um, obviously you watching this will not know what a journey it has been because I am NOT going to share the multiple videos that I filmed trying to get this right um, if you follow me on Instagram I'm gonna put like a little I don't know <laughs> shy a little um, banner of my Instagram name if you don't follow me you probably should um, but I because I love Instagram stories but I did post a little I don't want to say rant but kind of like a rant because um, I was like hyping myself up on Instagram being like yes YouTube channel coming soon like watch out world and then you know a lot of stuff happened I had like issues with lighting I honestly was a little bit naive and I thought I could just sit in front of a camera just chuck a ring light on it and that was the end of the story and I definitely have so much appreciation for people that sit in front of cameras and do this kind of stuff because not only does it take a lot of effort and like know-how of technology and things that I am not good at but it also takes um it's quite like this sounds I don't know if this is going to sound a little bit vain but it takes a lot of like being very confronted with yourself and especially if you've got no makeup on and stuff with hush lights you get to see all of your imperfections that you didn't know were there so um anyway um welcome to my youtube channel i hopefully will have done like a little bit of an intro type thing with my makeup all on so like the first thing you saw 
wasn't just me be a face with no hair done or anything like that but um I wanted this to be like a chit chat get ready with me not a tutorial I'm going to try and like mention the products I use but I'm not going to go in depth I do want to do a different um a different video where I talk about my favorite prod products and I had actually already filmed that and I'm scarred for life because that was that was also deleted <laughs> it's been it's been a journey and also this is not books I think you'll be able to tell because it's kind of on an angle um but it's just a backdrop I got because I really like it and it goes with the theme of today which is talking about me oh, I wish I got some chapstick I'm um, talking about me and how I got here, if you don't know who I am, I am Anne and I'm an author. Um, this isn't really what this channel is going to be about, even though my first freaking video is me talking about it, but I'm not really here to like self promote or anything like that because I don't want that. I don't want this channel to be about, hey, buy my book, I wrote another one. I definitely just want it to be more of a creative outlet for me a way to talk to my readers, a way to communicate with my readers, and just like a way to kind of like give myself something different. Uh, it is really hard if you are in any kind of job where you sit in front of a computer, even though I'm blessed, so blessed, like this is my job, and it's so creative and I love it, but if you are in any kind of um, vocation, is that how you say job, fancy way, um, then you know that sitting in front of a computer Especially if you don't talk to people, it can be quite lonely and it can get like, it can get to be quite a lot. So I wanted something fun and something light and I love watching YouTube videos so here I am making one. I want this to be the year of like not complaining about things I want to do and like why I can't do them but just like make ways to do them. We're all very blessed in this, I'm very blessed to be in the position I am, my generation is um, to be in a kind of world where you can create your own opportunities which is how I came to be here I created my own opportunity after writing a book and figured out how to publish it figured out how to um, uh, make money off it and make it my day job so I made a lot of mistakes I'm not gonna say that this is a how-to this is more of a story time because I don't feel at this point um, accomplished enough in my world even though I am very lucky I know there are a lot of authors out there that still are fighting to make it this a full-time gig and I don't want to downplay where I am I'm very proud of where I am uh, but I just I have a lot more goals for myself and I'm so excited to achieve them so I don't want this to be like you should listen to me because a, I made so many mistakes when I got here and B I'm probably gonna make a lot more that's just me I'm a human being kind of a mess of one. Um, I'm trying better to be a little bit more, more adult uh, this year but I'm also trying to be a little bit kinder on myself. Anyway, so this is what this is going to be a little story time of how I got here while I do my makeup. Again, I feel like I'm not accomplished enough to do a makeup tutorial. Like, I love putting on makeup and I have so much fun doing it but I, again, have a lot to learn so this is just gonna be me talking pretty much and I'm first gonna start off with the e.l.f. Poreless Primer I love this actually I usually use the Tatcha, I might even use both just because I'm gonna be that bitch um, the Tatcha, the Silk Canvas but I feel like it's been a little bit too like dewy or oily or something for me lately because my pores are just showing up girlfriend they're here and they're ready to party so I might just put, oh I want more of that if you're looking for a primer that's luxurious and you want to like spend a little bit harder in coin, anything by Tatcha just in general. I love their Joey Skin Cream, but anything by them I think is worth the money personally. And skincare is where you're gonna, where you want to spend your money. Anyway, that's not what we're gonna talk about while I'm putting on makeup. Oh, uh, we're gonna talk about. How I became a self-published author and wrote, oh, shit, I've forgotten how many books I've written in the neighborhood of 22. 22 or 23? We don't know. But anyway, so to talk about that, I have to go all the way back to when I was um, 19 years old and doing, or 20 years old and almost finished my fashion degree. Um, 
quick pause in this story that I've only been like doing for two seconds. I'm using that L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear in 435 because this is my favorite foundation of life. Um, so I was studying fashion design because I was very like sure of myself that I wanted to be a fashion stylist and I loved clothes and I loved the glamour of them and I loved personal style and I I wanted to be in fashion. I said to anyone who would listen, growing up, I grew up in a very small town in New Zealand, if you haven't noted the accent and if you don't know who I am, um, I grew up in a very small town in New Zealand and I always knew that A, I wanted to get out of that small town and live in New York and B, I wanted to work in fashion. That was it. Like, don't even talk to me about anything else. Like, people struggling with their kind of um, direction in life and what they want to do couldn't relate. Was kind of arrogant about it, if I'm honest. I was like, I'm going to move to New York and that is that. So, I was very... My identity was very attached to... I'm just going to pile the foundation on, by the way. I just feel like being cake face today. Um, my identity was very connected and very, like, intertwined with... Rude. That was a very loud car. My identity was very intertwined with this lifestyle that I had envisioned for myself and this glamorous world where I would never go back to where I grew up and I would be this person living this glamorous life. So fast forward to six months shy of graduating fashion school. I was down. I can label it depression now for sure but at that time I wasn't um, is in touch with myself and I wasn't able to admit that it was depression honestly uh, I didn't want to admit that I didn't want to kind of like talk about the fact that this this thing that I've said that I want to do and be for all these years of my life wasn't working out but I was so unhappy and I was so I felt so trapped because I didn't want to quit I didn't want to let my mum down. Uh, I didn't want to like let myself down, but I was also very aware that I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it for six months more. I couldn't do it for five minutes more. Like, obviously, that was my breaking point. Um, I dropped out six months shy of graduating. Spoiler alert. But I um I before that when I didn't sleep because I had, I still get bouts of insomnia when I'm stressed, but I had horrific insomnia, A, because I used to be up at four o'clock in the morning designing spring lines um, and crying over sewing machines. But I was also reading romance books. I need to go down my neck a little bit. Um, and they were my escape. They were my soulless, soulless? Soul ice. I'm an author, I know what. And they were, they were just my little sanctuary. These romance books where I could totally immerse myself. I would say that I was a big reader um, since all I could remember. My mum read me Harry Potter and I just, oh, I love to read. But I hadn't read many romance books until that point in my life. Um, and I just, I, I found them and they gave me something I needed and I was so ferociously reading them when I was procrastinating assignments or when I just physically couldn't do it and oh, can't blend it in this bad boy um, and I was reading them so fast that I kind of like ran out of books to read I was reading like two or three books a day and I got to a point where I just couldn't find it anymore um, I can't remember what year this was 2013 I don't even know how to do math, I don't know how old it was. Anyway, so one night at about two in the morning, I was like, screw it, I'll just start writing a little story. And I didn't label it a book. I didn't label it, um, I'm doing anything, I'm writing something. I didn't say to myself, I'm going to quit and become an author. It wasn't anything to do with that. I was like, here's this, like, I can't find this story to read. How about I just think about what I ideally want to write about? And that's what I did. And I would say I wrote about 
a, a quarter of my first book, Making in the Cat, and then I just put it away, didn't really think about it, and I dropped out of uh, university, as I said, six months shy of graduating, and um, this is the veil, setting powder by Hourglass, by the way. Um, another thing I highly recommend spending money on. I, yeah. My mum wasn't happy with me, to be fair. She's so supportive and so amazing, but she was not party to how down I was feeling. I don't even know to this day she, if she actually knows how close I was to like complete breakdown, but um, I didn't tell anyone. So I just kind of said to her in a little bit of an arrogant way, I was like, I'm not doing it, I don't want to do it. And I wouldn't share my weakness and my vulnerability with her. So I just told her I was quitting. Needless to say, she was not happy. And I spent a year um, working full-time in retail. It wasn't ideal. I I love working with people and I loved like dressing people up and that was like, I th thrived in that atmosphere, but I knew it wasn't for me. I knew it wasn't what I wanted, but I loved the fact that I could leave work at five or six o'clock and I was done. There was nothing to worry about. There was no, collections, there was no sewing, there was no anything, there was no pressure and I really really thrived on that um, and so that was a year of just me kind of like cleansing my palette, I still, I didn't pick up that book again, I wasn't happy still to be fair but I was closer to being a little bit more well adjusted and I was further away from that breakdown. So one of my friends from fashion school who also dropped out, she just uh, and I met up for coffee and we just thought why don't we just go to Europe because my mum in New Zealand we have a thing called our AWE which is an overseas experience where a lot of people will take a gap year between high school and university and just go to Europe and um, I'd saved up a lot of money and I decided let's do it let's buy a one-way ticket and let's just see where it takes us so we did we brought a one-way ticket landing in Portugal one of my favorite countries in the world by the way um, we had four days accommodation out of backpackers and we had no other plans. And, oh no, we had tickets to the Kooks in Barcelona at some point, but the rest of it, we had some vague contacts that my mum had put me in uh, touch with because my mum did an OE and she still tells stories about it and it just sounded like the most amazing time. She actually met my dad in an All Blacks game in London, even though they grew up two hours away from each other in New Zealand. That's kind of a cute story, by the way. Um, so yeah, we had few contacts, but not many. And we volunteered and we kind of worked in different places. I worked on a vineyard in the south of France. Um, my voice just went all when I did that. I worked on a vineyard in the south of France. We worked in a hostel in Spain. Did all this random stuff just to kind of keep us going. Um, and anyway, I wrote a blog because mum wanted to make sure I was alive and I just intended it for her kind of thing and classic mother that she is, she shared it with everyone in town and I would get these messages about people being like, oh, I read your blog and all this really awesome feedback and it was kind of the first time I had gotten such feedback from something that I wrote and something I created and I was it kind of was a little light bulb moment for me which my mum was gonna say. I told you so because she'd always said that I should be a writer. And anyway, so after I got home, I was like, right, I'm gonna go back to school and do something I actually wanna do. So I did a journalism degree. And at that point, I found a little um, Word document on my computer called Making the Cut and I finished it. I googled how to self-publish, I went to Amazon's cover creator, and oh my lord, I did not edit it. I went onto Grammarly or some such app, app on um, the interweb, and I thought, I'll just run it through this little proofreader, I don't need an editor. And anyone that's been there, here with me since then, you want to know, you did need an editor. Yes, you did. And you needed a professional cover designer. But I didn't know any of that. I was very naive and I just thought, well, I've got this thing that I wrote. Why don't I do something with it? At this point, had not told anyone, hadn't told a soul I wrote a book. And 
even in my head, I don't even know if I like thought of it as a book. I just, I thought of it as this thing that kind of almost saved me at some point in my life and um, I wanted to do something with it. So I did all this Googling on how to do things and I published it and I thought that Amazon would email you with every sale that you got from your book. That does not happen. So anyway, um, I kind of forgot about it. I don't know for how long. And then one day I checked my like little dashboard and people had bought it. And also some people had rightfully so said some pretty scathing things about it. <laughs> Which I think to this day, honestly, the reason why making the cut picked up enough for me to continue writing and for me to have readers was the, the, the negative, was the people saying, you know, some very warranted things about it. And, um, you know, they say all press is bad press, but I will tell you, if you're thinking of writing a book, don't do that. Get a professional cover designer, get a professional editor. Don't do what I did. It was a complete bout of luck that I had a core group of readers that looked past the many, many flaws in um, making the cut and gave me encouragement. I still remember I got this email, the first email that I um, got, and it was like saying beautiful things about making the cut and asking me when my next book was coming. And I swear to God, I can't even remember that. Gosh, I feel like such a bitch and I can't even remember the name, but whoever you are that sent me that email, you're the reason I continued writing. You're the reason I've written 20 something books because I didn't think that anyone wanted another book and I still had these characters in my mind, sure, but I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. So I wrote Firestorm, which is the second in the series. And then I wrote Out of the Ashes, which is the third. And at this point, no one in my family knew that, and no one of my friends knew that. I honestly can't even really tell you why. Well, I can tell you why. This, I can hear my mum saying, put your shoulders back. Um, I can tell you why at the start, why I didn't tell anyone. Because I didn't expect anything to come of it. I expected to fail, which is not something I should ever <laughs> recommend. You should always believe in yourself, but I just didn't understand the self-publishing world or the indie world, so I just did not expect a thing to come from it and I just didn't want to say to people, like I am someone who wants to, I don't want to tell people about my plans for success, I just want to succeed and show them. And it, I didn't even have any thoughts of succeeding at this point anyway, but um, yeah, so I just didn't expect anything to come of it. I kind of had a weird detachment from reality. There was two different parts of me. There was the me that was writing books and had this beautiful core group of pe people on the internet rooting for me. And then there was the me that was studying full time and also working full time. And um, there was never the twain shall meet, I guess. But um, they got to a point where the twain must meet. Uh, a, because I quit my job um, in retail because I just couldn't. I couldn't study full time and have quite a demanding degree and work full time and write full time. So I was making enough money at this point, which I didn't even think was happening either. I actually rewind a little bit, but um, after I got raked over the coals for the lack of editing, formatting, developmental editing, anything. Um, I took Making the Cut down and I hired an editor, a couple of whom I got ripped off by a couple of editors, but anyway, um, I maxed out all of my credit cards, I had no money, and I took it, the biggest chance to do this, um, and it paid off, so luckily, uh, it's <laughs> not a very responsible thing to do, but I did, and so I got to a point where I could quit my job and I still didn't tell anyone and I was still at university full time so yeah I had to tell people at this point I don't know if I put enough brother on but I'm just living with it um, I had to tell my my mum and I was a coward because I don't I, I can't even articulate it to you I don't know why but I just didn't want to talk about it I didn't want to make a big thing out of it I didn't want it to be a thing I was just like can I just figure out a way to tell you and it not be a thing so I texted her, I, something along the lines of, hey mum, I wrote some books and they're doing well, so I don't have to work at this retail job anymore. 
And I remember about two seconds after she got that text, I got a call from her crying, um, very proud. And I said, you can't tell anyone. Again, I come from a very small town in New Zealand. I said, please don't tell anyone. Um, and just, I just want it, you know, I want it to be my own and yours, but I just wanted to tell you just, just in case you thought that I was doing something uh, for money <laughs> that you might not approve of. Uh, but my mum would approve of pretty much anything as long as it was legal. <laughs> um, which is funny enough because I actually, not long after that, I flew over to Australia to stay with some friends. And I remember one of my best friends picking me up from the airport and she was like very straight faced and she's not a very straight faced kind of like person. I remember asking me, you can tell me, but are you a stripper? And I was like, what? She's like, I know you quit your job, but you flew over here. I'm like, no, I'm writing books, but I couldn't make any money being a stripper. I don't have any moves and I don't have any boobs either. Um, but yeah, that was funny. And so I said to my mum, can't I told my two best friends and I, who I trusted with my life and I still do. And I said to my mum, you can't tell anyone. And so she promised and more tears. And then I got a call and said, I told your little brother. And I was like, no. Okay, just make sure he knows not to tell anyone. Yeah, yeah, he knows not to tell anyone, you're good. The next day, I got a call from my mum. Oh, your brother went down to the pub. And now he told people. And anyone that lives in a small town, especially small town, it was small town anywhere, but small town New Zealand, um, word travels fast, guys. <laughs> there is, there are no secrets. So it became very well known that I was not only writing books, but I was writing sex books as a lot of, um, a lot of the more conservative people in my town said. So I definitely, um, I got a lot of support, I definitely don't want to make it sound like everyone in my town were arsehole, pretty much, I would say like 99% were really, really supportive, but I didn't even want that support, I just wanted to do this anonymously, and just like, create and not keep, like have any knowledge that there was someone that went to school with me who was reading or following or anything like that, I just wanted to be really anonymous, and I wanted just to have like this gift of creative freedom with without anyone, I wanted to do it to be my own. So that was a struggle for me, especially when I was down at the pub at one point, because I wasn't living at um, home, I was living in Wellington, in Wellington, New Zealand. But I did come home at some point and I was at the pub and my primary school teacher approached me to talk to me about my books and that was, that was a fun time. But yeah, so the cat was out of the bag at that point. So my family knew and my friends knew and I was very, very well supported by them. Um, and at this point I had connected, I was very lucky to have connected with a few amazing women in the industry, Alma Jones, um, Addison Jane, Jessica Gardziella, I'm so sorry girlfriend if I said that wrong. Um, and gosh, you don't even know how invaluable it was to have people just talk me through some of the most basic stuff that you think that I would know, but I didn't. I was beyond clueless and I'm very much still very clueless now. So just keep that in mind. I, oh my God, I almost dropped my Tati Beauty palette. I relied so much on those ladies that, and I still do to this day. I would not be where I am without the tribe that helped support me and lift me up. So I didn't know much at all, but um, I just continued writing. I had such a joy from it. And I love, it was a real, it was a savior to me, honestly. I, you know, that depression that I had at, um, when I was doing fashion, it crept back in because it's an illness. It is not something that goes away, no matter how amazing things there are in your life. And I definitely more had anxiety than, like clinical depression, but I had kind of a little cocktail of everything, but I still at this point did not know how to label it and I did had this aversion to say that this is what it was and I was in emergency rooms, I was in, you know, doctors in and out on all this medication because I thought I had um, a throat inf infection because I couldn't breathe all the time and my doctor was like, are you sure you're not like anxious, like you, you don't have anxiety? I was like, why would I have anxiety? Like, I'm only writing books and 
doing a full-time uni degree um, but yeah so that's what saved me that and yoga um, I want to talk about yoga on this channel too but uh, it saved me creating these worlds and, and getting these messages from people you guys don't even know what your messages do to me you really lift me up on days where I'm struggling to this day so I just want uh, maybe this is going to be a little bit of a love letter to my readers because I just want you guys to know that I would not be sitting in this chair without you. I would not be where I am without you. So let's just make that known. Um, anyway, so continue onward. I still remember this very vividly. I went to Bali with one of my best friends and I remember getting an email from Harper Sloan and I had read all of her books and I was such a big fan and I remember I screamed when I was in Bali and my friend was like, what? And I was like, oh my gosh, I got this invitation to go on this author cruise in America. And I was just like, and he was like, you have to do it, you have to do it. And I was so nervous. Like I, for a start, I didn't even know that signings or anything like that. I didn't know that they existed. And I took the biggest risk of my like life going then. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anyone. Luckily, Almo, my queen, came with me. Um, because she was, she's an author, she's like a freaking force of nature. Can we just talk about that for a sec? Um, and so I, like she really, she's the reason I went, honestly. And um, I'm gonna do, we're actually gonna post a video, we've already filmed it, but I met my now fiance on that very cruise. Uh, that did so many things to me, that cruise. It opened me up to a world of readers because I was tucked away in the bottom of the world. I didn't know about the romance industry, I was very very on the outside and I still like I still am blown away by it I didn't know that the romance industry exists but when I kind of dived into it or well, until I dived into it should I say and that cruise really it changed things so I feel like um like if I'm gonna give every, anyone advice by the way this is the conspiracy palette by Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson and it's like the best thing in my life apart from my fiance and our dogs um if I was going to give anyone advice, just take every opportunity given to you. I, I don't even know where I'd be if I didn't do that. I was so scared though. I was so afraid when I before I did that. So just don't let fear kind of dictate. Just jump in, dive in. I wouldn't be here without it, um, without having said yes to that and making connection and meeting people. So that's like, and then... I don't even know what to say about when a lot of stuff has happened in between then but I honestly if I'm gonna give advice to someone because I do get people messaging me asking for advice and I'm so touched that you would even think that I'm someone to get advice from because I still feel like I'm stumbling around in the dark looking for the light right now this is so much guesswork for me but just keep writing like, you're doing this you're doing this thing because you're a reader that is how I got here I'm a reader and just never forget where you come from and never forget your joy. So I feel like I need to kind of highlight that. A lot of people in this industry, yeah, it's about hustle. Yeah, it's about working hard and making good connections. But just like don't sacrifice for your art because it is art. And this industry is very, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to say that. There are so many amazing women that lift up other women. I just heard a dog and so many amazing people in general but it's just like anything else there is a, there is a lot going on there there are some people who aren't here for the right reasons and there are just just there as with anything you know so I don't know I don't know I don't even know where I'm going <laughs> but um, from then from after book splash I finished my degree I'm so proud of myself I'm not even gonna freaking down like that. I got a bachelor's degree while I wrote, I think I wrote 15 books while I was getting a bachelor's degree and half of that time I was working full time. So that's another thing. There's no reason you can't do this. There are so many like, whoops, there are so many like full time mums that are authors that are juggling being a parent and doing this. There is no reason that you can't do this. Um, I feel like I really, really need to say that because if you have a joy and if you have the talent, and I feel like I have come so far from that first book. My OG readers are gonna 
they're gonna be with me there because I knew nothing. All I knew is that I loved creating, sorry, I loved immersing myself in an escape and that, well, I'm going dark. I always feel like I have to match my um, makeup to my nails and my nails are bright pink, but I just, I feel like I'm not in a bright pink mood. Um, so that's gonna be my advice. Just if you have a dream or a, like, or a passion, that's like you're halfway there. You have to be passionate about this. You can't just do something and be like, I've heard that writing books and being self-published makes money because that is not the truth. Honestly, there are so many people, like I thank my lucky stars every day that I was in the right place at the right time and had the right readers and the right kind of readers. There were so many things, just like the universe was really looking out for me guys. And also these lights are super hot. <laughs> so yeah, and that is how I, um, got to where I am, which is right now I'm living in Tampa, Florida with the love of my life and our little dogs and I plan to write forever. If, like, I hope to God that I one day don't wake up and I don't have any readers anymore because I'm going to be honest with you guys, there are plenty of times where I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and panic attack, full on panic attack, um, being very scared that this is going to go away because like it's, it's a very like I don't know it's it's a really scary thing to be in control of your own future it's a blessing don't even make it sound like I am complaining because I know it's a blessing but it is like terrifying if I drop the ball that's like there's no one else to blame but me if I fuck am I allowed to swear in here I don't know if I fuck something up like it's on me and I have to like I have to figure that out like this is how I make my money so I can't like screw things up and that's another thing that I really come to learn is like I'm like a lot of females I really and this is I don't like this about because this is just it says a lot about history and stuff but I really care about being white I don't like when people don't like me it keeps me up at night I, I just can't deal with it even though I'm a nice person. I don't do things to, to, to ruin people's lives. I don't, I would be physically sick if I thought that I had done something to someone's life and they thought that like, and it damaged it. I, that would give me so much anxiety, I can't even think about it. And I think this industry, a lot of it, you have to learn how to say no. This is just in life too. But, for the first part of it, I cared so much about being liked and I wanted, I didn't want anyone to think I was a bitch and anyone, like I didn't want to have a reputation for do, being a certain way. Gosh, that was my biggest fear. And now I'm like kind of having a little bit of uh, evolution in that respect because I know I'm a good person. I know that like I really try hard with my readers and I, and I know that I try hard with my friends and I know that I'm not a, a terrible person, so I feel like if I'm going to say no, I have to say no to things that don't serve me. And if they don't like damage someone's, you know, physical or financial or emotional state on like purpose, then I'm okay. Like, you're allowed to say no to things, you're allowed to say no to people, projects, whatever. And that is definitely something that I'm learning with this industry because I did get a little bit caught up in I don't even know how to say it, but I got caught up in a lot of things and it it, it kind of like damaged me and my state of mind. And I'm a creative soul, you guys. If my, if my, if I'm in a tumultuous headspace, I'm not gonna write, or maybe I am. My fiance and I have broke up a couple of times. We're gonna talk about that in another video. Um, and I wrote some of the best books of my life during that period. Shout out to Birds of Paradise. But, if, but if there are certain times if I'm like physically, like if there's something stressing me out, then I can't write. I just can't. I have to be in such a like beautiful space of mind to produce things most of the time. We'd say most of the time. Um, and if I'm not, then I don't write. And if I don't write, then I eventually am not going to get paid. So that is how I have to think about um, things. I feel like I'm really close. Um, so that is how I'm like, I'm protecting my peace, I'm protecting my, 
um, self-esteem, I'm protecting my like spiritual health, my financial health by figuring out how to say no to things and not be worried that people will hate me because I have so many amazing readers, such a good tribe behind me. I know that people aren't going to hate me, the right people are going to know who I am and that's what is most important to me honestly. I feel like I need a pause. I, I need a pause. Okay, depending on the way, <laughs> Taylor was just yelling at some sports game. All right, depending on the way that I have edited this, either Taylor or myself have edited, this might be a bit of a jarring, <laughs> a jarring transition because I got really hot with all of these lights. I get really hot really easily and I decided to take a break and straighten my hair. And any woman or man who knows that straightening, uh, who straightened their hair knows that ain't a way to get cool. So I thought if I'm gonna commit, I would just chuck on some eyelashes and lip. And I'm not gonna do eyelashes on camera, guys. You don't wanna see me try. It was a journey and I don't even know if they're properly stuck. So anyway, that is just like a quick chatty get ready with me about my journey in the industry. Um, I can do way more in depth if you guys like want like a step by step. Even though, as I said, I'm not an expert, so I feel like I need to have a disclaimer. But I have learned some like cool little tricks. Sorry, I'm playing with my hair. Um, I have learned some little tricks along the way, and I want to help anyone I can because it is really hard doing this all on your own. And I definitely made a lot of mistakes that I hope that some people. I I know that I'm doing this too much. Um, some people would like like to know about so that you don't have to repeat them because there are some mistakes you have to make yourself and there are others that you know you you don't have to do if there's someone there to, to kind of warn you off so that is like a little introduction i guess to me and like what i'm here for I, I hope that you enjoyed it and i hope that you're still here watching and i hope that this finally worked um but stay tuned i've got a question and answer video coming up too and a in-depth, very honest video with my fiance Taylor about how we got here and all of our breakups and what we've learned. But thank you so much for watching this, um, for supporting me if you're a reader. If you're not, like, hey girl or guy, <laughs> welcome. I don't know how you got here, but I'm glad you're here. But predominantly to my readers, I love you so much. And I know, like, when people on the internet are like, I love you so much, it might sound like a little redundant, but it's true. Like, I would not be here without you and your support constantly is just it's my North star so I hope you know that and um I love you and I'll see you in the next one.